Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be doing a video review of the Nexus 7 tablet. Uh, while I'm outside here, you might notice that there's a lot of glare in the background. I'm going to be reviewing the physical part and aspects of the tablet while I'm outside. Then I'm going to move inside when covering the uh, OS, that way you can see the screen better. So basically we'll start with the physical aspect and the way it's designed. It comes with a 7 inch screen, it's 1280 by 800 resolution, it's HD, at 216 PPI. It has a backlit IPS display and it comes with Corning scratch resistant glass which I wouldn't really trust but hey it's better than non scratch resistant right. Uh, you'll notice that it has a 1.3 megapixel front facing camera, it has no rear camera, uh, weighs about 340 grams. The actual measurements of the device itself is 198.5 millimeters by 120 by 10.45. It's really slim, compact, light, not bad. I mean, fits greatly in the hand. It's meant to be um, an e-reader. Google wants you to buy books from their Google Play Store, and of course, it you can turn it from landscape to portrait and portrait to landscape, you know, and then you can watch movies on the HD screen. It's phenomenal. Uh, so, let's cover the physical aspects, which I did some already, and then we'll go into the hardware and then work on the OS when I go inside. That way, you can see the screen better. So basically, as I said, it's a seven-inch HD screen. Um, the bottom has the micro USB port which is used when you connect it to the computer or for power adapter even though my camera is not focusing right now it has a headphone jack the left side has nothing but a some sort of adapter here I assume it's going to be some sort of uh, keyboard connector or bass connector top has nothing the right side has two volume rockers up and down and a power button as for the back itself, it has a nice rubbery feel to it. The Nexus logo, Asus logo, uh, hardware designed by Asus, the OS designed by Google, of course. And here you'll notice that there's one speaker grill. Uh, on my website, I posted a um, news article about how people opened it up and went through every single physical bit possible. And they discovered that even though there's one speaker grill, there's actually two speakers inside. They just use one speaker grill. So it's a nice little perk to discover that there's actually two speakers instead of one. Uh, of course, it is a Wi-Fi only device. This is the 8GB model. Uh, there's a 16GB model, which I believe as of right now, it's sold out pretty much everywhere, including Google Play. Uh, it's running Android Jelly Bean. It came with Android 4.1. Um, within 10 minutes of using it, I got an alert from Google saying that, hey, there's Android version uh, 4.1.1 available. It addresses some bug issues, uh, it's very slightly um, improves speed performance, even though it's very snap, snappy and quick enough as it is. Um, it has one gigabyte of RAM, and I believe that's pretty much, oh yes, it does have Bluetooth, I almost forgot that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside where there's not as much screen glare and that way you can see the uh, OS in action a bit better and then we'll continue from there. Okay so for the OS itself you got the desktop which is exactly like ice cream sandwich the apps listing animates exactly like ice cream sandwich nothing different there you got apps then you got widgets ice cream sandwich again um, okay so I opened up Google Play. You'll notice that mine might be different from your version or if you're looking at one in America. That's because the Canadian edition, we don't get the magazine subscription service up here, which is a big shame. Uh, I don't think that's Google's fault. They are trying to like expand their Google Play services everywhere. I think it might be something to do with the Canadian magazine corporation or something. Who cares? Like, Whatever, man. Like, Let's just get into it. But anyway, um, so Google Play looks pretty much the same as ice cream sandwich up here in Canada. In the US it'll look fairly different I assume. Um, now you'll notice that at the bottom there are no hardware buttons. These are the buttons that show up just like the uh, Galaxy Nexus. The back button, home button and the task manager buttons are all part of the OS. It's part of the screen. Okay. And um, one thing I noticed fairly different from my Galaxy S2 which is running ice cream sandwich is that if you go on the notification bar, you drop it down, you'll get the name of the network you're connected to down here, okay? And you have this button which clears all notifications. But like I said, you get the name of the network down here, and at the top here you get an option to change it between uh, portrait and landscape. So right now it's, it's got this arrow pointing, so if I return it, okay? 
you can switch it between portrait and landscape. If you do tap it again, you get this lock icon, which means you can't turn it around now. Okay? So you get that little option there. Another thing I noticed be that's different between this and my Galaxy S2 running ice cream sandwich is that Jelly Bean gives you this uh, button at the top when the notification bar is dragged down. That's actually your settings menu. If you tap on it, your settings options comes up. So it's a neat little fit feature. Uh, a lot of people have been complaining that it's just it's kind of annoying to put a settings icon on the desktop here. So Google did a nice little job of adding the option in the notification drop down. Uh, okay, so this is a quad-core tablet, and my Galaxy S2 is a dual-core. The one thing that uh, Google did with Android Jelly Bean is that they've included this thing called Project Butter, which apparently increases the uh, frames per second of a phone that's running Jelly Bean by 60 frames per second. Basically, the closing and opening animations are a lot faster and smoother than ever before. I'll be very honest with you, I don't notice a difference. Uh, my Galaxy S2 is extremely fast as it is. I can barely notice a difference. Uh, so when I close this app listing, see, it, that's, the, that's the thing they're talking about. Stuff like that kind of animation has been improved in speed-wise a lot more. Um, I don't really care about animation speed too much. I care more about lag and effectiveness of opening an app. Uh, comparing a quad-core with a dual-core device... It's it's just too hard to tell because there's nothing I've been running that requires that much processing power. I'm not a tablet gamer. You get the customary Google apps, Gmail, Google Plus, uh, Google Maps, everything, and they're all designed for tablet use. You can see that they adjust accordingly. Very different from the phone UI. Um, now, another problem with Jelly Bean is that because it's so new, I believe the Android uh, SDK for Jelly Bean has only been released like two days ago as of this video recording, not posting. Um, so right now, I'm having trouble downloading a lot of Android apps because they're not compatible. So hopefully in the coming weeks, developers will you know, you wake up, download the new SDK, and update their apps. That's the biggest issue I'm having. Uh, what else? It comes with... Google Chrome browser. This is now the stock browser. The stock browser has been removed and Google Chrome has replaced it. It's now stable. It's no longer in beta phase. So even if you're running an ice cream sandwich device, you can get it from the Google Play Store. But this is the browser that comes stock with the device. Uh, there's a 16 gig model, as I mentioned, 8 gig. I'm fairly happy with this model. As the screen itself, I went down to 50% after about three days leaving it on standby and that includes about four hours of um, screen usage keep in mind I that's how I used it when it came out of the box I never charged it and when it came out of the box I believe it was like at 67 percent so it gives you a rough idea that 67 percent down to 50 percent three days standby and about four hours usage that's great it's, it's awesome um, so I'm really pleased with the battery life and of course, let's move on to Google now. So to access it, you hold on the home button, swipe up where it says Google, and this is the infamous Google now that everyone is talking about. Unfortunately, my camera's not focusing again. Okay, so there, these are the things Google's been talking about. You get the cards. The first one that shows up for me is always the weather and my city location. Uh, let's try searching for something. Uh, okay. Who founded Google? Google was founded by Larry Page and Sergey Brin. Yeah. So what will happen is it'll give you a card with the most likely answer to your question or whatever your search query is. And if you go down, you'll notice there's this normal Google results showing up. Okay? So it does an actual Google search. Uh, let's try something else. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. How old is Richard Branson? Richard Branson is 62 years old. Right. So he's the founder of Virgin. Um, so I haven't played with this too much. The thing about this is that Google Now is meant for your daily living. So if you're traveling, it'll give you traffic. Uh, let's try this. How was the traffic on the 427? 
Alright, so the 427 is a highway pretty close to me. As you can see, it didn't have a card result because it, it might have given you the wrong answer. So instead, it just did a go normal Google search result of exactly what I said. Okay, the one uh, Jelly Bean feature that's missing from my tablet is the sound search widget. Basically, it runs exactly like Shazam or SoundHound, and it's just a widget, not an app. And when you tap on um, the widget, it'll search for whatever song's playing. When it gives you res the result, tap on it again, and it'll give you the Google Play link to purchase the song. This is not on my version. I assume it's because I'm in Canada. Uh, I was able to get it on my Galaxy S2, which is running Ice Cream Sandwich, because of a mod. But this is running a stock ROM, so I think the reason it's not showing up is because I'm in Canada. I'm not sure about that. I can't confirm it. Obviously, an American would have to confirm that, but Shazam is, and SoundHound are just way better anyway. Um, closing thoughts. $209 for Canadians. I believe it's $199 for Americans. This is worth every penny. I do prefer a 10-inch screen, but considering that it's coming at this price, quad-core tablet, uh, this is the 8-gig model at $209. I can't really complain. Uh, Google, if you order from Google, they credit you back the shipping costs by giving you money for the Google Play Store and then some. Uh, I think Google and Asus have done a phenomenal job. I'll give this tablet a 4 out of 5. Not the greatest tablet out there, but not the worst either. Um, I do prefer Android over iOS and Blackberry. Uh, I will make a video comparison of the Playbook versus this tablet right after the ending of this video. I'll put, to, I'll put the link up at the end of this video, basically. It's worth every penny. I do not regret this decision at all, even though it's a Wi-Fi only model. If I need mobile internet, I have my cell phone. And if anything, if I want to take this along with me, I'll tether my cell phone data plan to this tablet. So, even though it's a Wi-Fi only model, I'm happy. Uh, I'm loving it. It's great. Battery life is superb, as I mentioned. And I didn't even try turning off automatic brightness when I've been using it, which apparently addresses the screen uh, power hog issue. So, it's definitely worth checking out. Worth every penny. Uh, I hope this review did help you make a decision as to whether or not you want to purchase it or not. Um, but uh, yeah, if you want technology news and rumors, check out my website. If you found this video useful, hit the like button. It really does help. Or subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching.